Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 5 of Simple Drums Done Well. Alright, what's up y'all? So we're back for episode 5 of Simple Drums Done Well, and today we're going to be talking about Jojo Mayer, who is a drummer that in the drumming community specifically is probably one of the most famous drummers alive today. But before we do, a little bit of history. Jojo is a Swiss drummer who started off playing jazz, and then once he moved to New York, realized that jazz wasn't really happening the way he thought it was before he came here, uh, and then apparently Miles Davis had passed around that time, who was kind of his, that was his goal to play with Miles. So what Jojo did was he took a style of music, which is jungle or drum and bass. Um, jungle music happened in the early 90s in London. Let me get this mic out the way though, right? Um, so jungle music kind of started in the early 90s in London and then drum and bass was in the, in the late 90s and they're kind of similar but maybe different subsets of a similar style of electronic music. So what Jojo did is he took these two electronic styles of music that were solely using programmed instruments and programmed drums, and he said, you know what, I'm gonna put this onto my acoustic drum set. And he started a band called Nerve uh, around the time that he moved to the US, early 2000s, late 90s. And Nerve is mostly a group comprised of Jojo Mayer, his longtime collaborator John Davis, and the most recent addition, Jacob Bergson. Now, John Davis and Aaron Nevesy own the Bunker Studio in Brooklyn. The Bunker Studio was founded about 15 years ago and then relocated to a new space in 2011. And John Davis and Aaron Nevesy are both engineers at the studio, but also both kind of part of this band Nerve. Um, John playing bass in the band, but Aaron kind of doing behind the scenes, kind of live producing and creating sounds um, when Nerve plays live shows. So kind of a really cool home base um, for Nerve in some ways, and they've certainly recorded a lot of music there, but also a kind of collaborative team that has this recording studio and live band, which I think is so cool. So Jojo said, I'm gonna take this electronic music from London and I'm gonna start this band and play it on acoustic instruments. This is coming out of inspiration from artists like Aphex Twin, Fotec, and Square Pusher out of the UK. And when Jojo moved to New York in the early 2000s, he kind of brought this idea or created this idea within New York and it became somewhat of a drum and bass or jungle scene um, in a live way within the city at that time which I think is super awesome. So we're not gonna go too deep into the history of drum and bass and jungle music, mostly because I don't really have any business talking about that. We'll talk quickly just kind of about the origin of this style of music and how it's progressed up until this point. So the first kind of rhythm that you often hear about with this style of music is something called the Amen Break. So the Amen Break is a four bar sample by the Winstons and from their tune Amen Brother from 1969. It was performed originally by Gregory Coleman but has since been chopped up and used and sampled on more records than any other single piece of uh, audio in music history. Um, of course, producers used other pieces of audio like uh, Clyde Stubblefield's Funky Drummer as well for different tunes, but Amen Break is really the OG. And so these artists in the 90s in London were really getting into speeding this particular break up. Um, so the original tempo of the break was 136, and with jungle music, the tempo started to get above 150. Drum and bass is within like 160 to 180, essentially. It's taking this initial groove, which sounds like this. And then speeding it up to this tempo, so now it sounds like this.
so back to JoJo and a little bit more history on JoJo himself. So JoJo first came on my radar around 2007 when I saw his instructional DVD entitled Secret Weapons for the Modern Drummer Part 1. And it is an incredible DVD. It's definitely a legendary instructional DVD within drum circles. And it's really just about hand technique and all these different extended techniques that modern drummers are employing, like push-pull, for example, from episode two, and molar, which is kind of an older, older technique, but maybe modern applications of the molar stroke, finger strokes. It's an incredible DVD. And it also features performances of JoJo playing these nasty drum solos with sometimes really small setups on the street in New York. Or oftentimes also in Bunker Studio with backing tracks, presumably by Nerve. The same year, Nerve released their debut record called Prohibited Beats, which is the first time I'd really sat and listened to them. And also they've released a whole series of EPs and EP1 uh, was the first one that I really listened to a lot. I'm gonna butcher this name, but this track Schluter sits off of EP1 really just blew my mind uh, the first time I heard it and even still to this day, uh, sounds a little bit like this. So one other thing that I really love about JoJo other than his playing, which has been a huge inspiration for me and a big influence on me through the years, is his philosophy and kind of how deep JoJo is as a person, um, the way he talks about culture and music, and he's just a fascinating dude, highly intelligent, really interesting person. Um, so I'm going to recommend a couple things to check out if you want to see what JoJo's brain is like. One is an excellent documentary called Changing Time, which you can find on Nerve's YouTube, but I'll link to that below. And it's an hour-long documentary that kind of talks about JoJo's history and how he came to the U.S. and his thoughts on the state of music today and where the world is going today and just really, really interesting stuff. Um, I do want to just read one quote from Changing Time because I thought it really hit home with who Jojo is as a musician. And this is from a cultural theorist named Steven Turner. So Steven said, It's furious to see him play. It's so physical. He's just thrashing time itself in an effort to open up what's inside it. Jojo is a time lord. He's into time and stretches it. It's morphed, it's warped. He creates this kind of density in concert which tears the fabric of time. Which I think is just an amazing quote from Steven and really describes kind of the energy behind JoJo's playing. And uh, despite the fact that JoJo is a technical virtuoso, 100%, has amazing technique, um, he is consumed primarily with music and consumed with creation and improvisation, which is what makes him such a deep artist on so many levels. Whoa. One other thing about DVDs, so JoJo later released Secret Weapons for the Modern Drummer Part 2, which is a kind of supplementary DVD to the first one, which is solely about technique for feet. And similar to his hand stuff, Jojo has some really extended techniques and kind of crazy stuff that he does in that vein and related techniques and like molar foot technique and stuff. So I have all of these DVDs. I've been obsessed with his playing and his education stuff for as long as I can remember knowing about him. Definitely highly recommend checking those out and I'll link to those below as well. One other thing you can check out if you want more into JoJo's philosophy is a TED talk JoJo did called Exploring the Distance Between Zero and One. And this is about music, but also just about kind of ties in coding and technology to music and the philosophy within all of that and how it's related. Again, just fascinating stuff. Hey, look at me being complimentary. Okay, okay, yeah, all the time. So what I wanted to talk about in terms of practicing for this episode is actually a clip from his first DVD, Secret Weapons for the Modern Drummer. And it's one of the clips where he's just playing on the street in New York City with a small little two-piece kit, um, just snare drum, bass drum, hi-hat, ride cymbal.
and I think I first saw this clip on drummerworld.com. Uh, so normally I transcribe everything for this channel, but in this case I actually didn't transcribe this one since it was already on the Drummer World site. So I got a credit to, sorry again for pronunciation, Zizolt Karampe. And the whole transcription is amazing, uh, but rather than trying to just play this thing top to bottom, which certainly is a worthy pursuit, I figured we might talk about a couple little chunks that we can use to practice. You know how I like chunks, you know how I like little phrases. Um, to start to develop some of this drum and bass or jungle vocabulary. And this is like a 16 measure solo that Jojo did, but there's all these little two beat or three beat bits that are so, I think, indicative of not only his playing style, but also kind of the drum and bass rhythm. So let's hop onto the kit, let's check out some drum and bass phrases, and let's get out of here. Alright, so thank you for checking out this week's episode. If you dug it, I would really appreciate if you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Also the notification bell so you can see new videos when they come out. And otherwise, I'll see you next week for episode 6. Catch you on the flip. Do we get there? Did we get there? Uh, fix the hair, fix the hair. Let's get the hair going good. Okay, okay. Okay. That's 136. <laughs> this is gonna suck to edit, isn't it? Yeah. This is very familiar. This feels familiar. Yes. Nah, you don't gotta put that, man. You don't gotta put that. What's the drum and bass tempo range again? Oh, no sticks. Just like that, huh? gonna lead me like that, huh, drumstick? Where are you trying to run to, huh? Wow.
Wow, you really ran. You're really trying to hide. I'm trying to get tired of getting beat up. Oh, dang. 